Hello everybody, my name is Jeff Heath. Welcome back to the Vintage Workshop. In the last video we showed you all the tools necessary to uh, go ahead and make hand planes out of wood. Uh, today I feel like it's very important before we actually get started showing you how to make a plane to uh, discuss sharpening of plane floats. As I showed you before there are lots of different floats for lots of different applications and uh, basically what a float does is it helps you smooth out uh, parts of the plane that are very necessary to be flat and even for proper bedding of the iron, for uh, proper fitment of the wedge, and so on and so forth. So uh, because of that, uh, your tools need to be sharp, of course. All tools need to be sharp, uh, not only to be safe, but also for proper use. So uh, without uh, talking too much about it, let's uh, bring you in a little closer, and I'm going to show you the exact process of how you go ahead and get your uh, plane floats sharpened so that you can use them and uh, get the work, work done correctly. Okay, I brought you in uh, nice and close here so I can uh, hopefully show you exactly what's going on here. Uh, basically, uh, you know, what we're doing is we're ensuring that our, that our float is nice and sharp. And uh, as you can see, I've been using these uh, for a while now. And after you use them on hardwoods, they start to dull down. The hardness of a, of a float is somewhere between a file and a chisel. It's not extremely hard, but not so hard that you can't sharpen it with a file. So uh, that's exactly what we're gonna do. As I had stated before, uh, you're gonna end up using a, a triangular saw file to do this work, and uh, the size that you use is a six inch long, double extra slim file, and it works perfectly for uh, going ahead and uh, detailing this up, getting it nice and sharp so that uh, we can use it. Uh, and you know, this is something where as you're working on these all the time, you're gonna need to frequently do this. So it's a good idea to get comfortable with the process. So uh, one of the first things that you do, which I've already done uh, over on my metalworking vise over there, but there's no good place to set up the camera over there. So I'm gonna show you everything over here on my workbench is that uh, you take a, uh, a, a mill bastard file and you go ahead and draw it across jointing the top and what that does is it levels out all the teeth so you don't have undulations uh, where some teeth are touching and some aren't. That'll just make the tool work better. Once you have that done uh, basically what you want to do is take some uh, either some red uh, layout fluid. This is Dicom steel red layout fluid. Uh, if you don't want to go and find and, and buy that you can also use a, a Sharpie pen either red or blue or whatever color you can see visually and uh, basically you go ahead and you just take a little bit of layout fluid and you go ahead and you basically paint the teeth all the way around so that let me turn this around so you can see what I'm doing here and you're gonna go ahead and take the teeth and you're just gonna lay on the red fluid and what that's gonna do is that's gonna show you your work show you where you've been successful with the file and where you need to keep working and it also helps you keep things uh, basically horizontal uh, plumb and true running across there so that your teeth aren't skewed and, they're, and that they're all at even heights. So uh, this stuff is alcohol based so it does dry pretty quickly but for the purpose of expedience I'm going to go ahead and set that aside let it dry because I'm going to be sharpening all my files. Basically when I come in the morning uh, the first thing I do is I get all of my uh, floats sharpened up so that I'm ready to go for the for the day. And if I'm doing a lot of extensive floating uh, on particularly hardwoods, like sometimes I make planes out of locust or something like that, I may be resharpening these floats several times during the day. What you know, you can tell as soon as it starts getting dull. So what I have here is I've got this little board uh, that is basically a, a nice flat, hard, rigid work surface, and I've got it clamped down with a hold fast and in my, uh, in my bench vise, in my wagon vise, and I take a, uh, I take a pair of welding clamps, and, and this is what's gonna hold it in nice and rigidly to the, uh, to the piece of wood here. And it's nice and close to the edge of the bench because we don't wanna get a whole bunch of vibration. So the most important tooth is the first tooth, especially on a push file, because a lot of times you're gonna be bending into the, into the cut and you're gonna be putting a little bit of torque. You can put some bend on these floats, and that very first tooth works like a little chisel getting in there and it literally makes a really nice, really good, crisp, almost like a plane shaving. And so you want to make sure, you, especially on the, on the push floats, which this one is, that you get that first tooth, the front edge, 
nice and flat. Now, I'm not going to showing you sharpening there. Uh, you certainly can get your file in like so and get that front tooth going. But what I do is I clamp this vertically in my Wilton metalworking vise, and I do that edge first with a uh, with just a regular bastard file, so I get that first edge nice and sharp. So that's already done. I did that before we started rolling. So you know, once you do this, you know, it's just a matter of of following each tooth. It's very much almost identical to sharpening, refiling your rip saw. Uh, you know, for for your for your handsaw except that this is a much wider blade obviously the plate size is you know 20 thousandths uh, 25 thousandths of, of an inch whereas uh, you know this particular one is a, 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 a bed float it's an inch wide and and actually that is actually helpful to you because it helps you keep it nice and straight because what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're orienting your file so that you're moving straight across the top and the red fluid is there to tell you when you're dipping down or dipping up. So basically what we're doing is we're just pushing it across and you don't need a lot of down pressure. You let the file do the work and you'll start seeing where you start removing the layout fluid and you can start seeing the front edge of that tooth shining up. And what that is also doing is on the vertical face which is coming up that's a 60 degree angle in there it's you're filing two faces at the same time so you're preparing the front of the next tooth while you're filing the top of this tooth so you know you check it with your finger and and this first tooth is usually the one that takes the most wear so it will wear down probably a little quicker than the rest of them and rather than wasting your float and and filing every single tooth down to the height of the first tooth what you basically do is after you've gone and worn these down a little bit just grind off the first tooth because you really don't need uh, there aren't too many planes you're gonna build where you need six inches of uh, of the float so uh, after a while this is already in five years this is my second uh, bed float I've already worn the first one out it got down so thin that I actually cracked it so uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and carry on here so that first one looks good. And you, know, you basically just work your progression. And I'm not going to show you 20 minutes of this. Well, it won't take that long, but. I think you get the idea. Okay, that's going to cover sharpening the floats. I wanted to do this really quick and easy so that you guys understood the process. And, uh, you know, like I said, you, you go through and uh, you sharpen them as need be. I'm going to go ahead and get all my tools sharpened and I'm going to move on to uh, continuing making planes today. Uh, on the next video, we're going to go ahead and show you guys uh, how to lay out a plane billet and uh, how to mark the bed and the breast how to cut the escapement and how to get that mortise uh, nice and uh, even and square and how to bed the iron. So we're going to go ahead and proceed with the process of actually making a plane next. So thanks a lot for watching. Once again, if you guys have any questions or if you think I skipped over something and you need a question answered, go ahead and leave it in the comments. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and uh, from the Vintage Workshop. My name's Jeff. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.